Hi, my name is Claire. I'm a current actor in the Broadway company of Wicked. I'm coming at you from the Gershwin Theater in New York City, and you are watching Andy Tolsky's review of Wicked Part One. Ah, Claire, you're the best. Love you, thank you so much. And before we get started, I wanted to share this with you. This playbill is from 2007, the first time I ever saw the show, with the cast including, here I'll show you, Eden Espinoza as Elphaba, Megan Hilty as Glinda, Carol Kane as Madame Morrible, and John Rubenstein as the wizard, whose signature is on the front here, by the way. Also in the ensemble here, Adam Lambert. Yeah, that is just crazy. All right, on with the review. And thanks again, Claire. <laughs> Wicked, part one. I can't believe I just said that. This is the first half of the cinematic adaptation of the beloved Broadway musical Wicked, which just so happens to be my all-time favorite. This is a prequel of sorts to The Wizard of Oz. It tells the story of the origins of the Wicked Witch of the West and Glinda the Good, basically what happened before Dorothy dropped in. It starts off at Shiz University, where these two witches meet, and it's really all about their relationship. The highs, the lows, the bond that will change them for good. Now, all right, getting this out of the way, I've been a fan of this show for a very long time. I grew up with this CD, so this is a movie that I've been looking forward to for 20 years. And well, let's just say this movie might have changed me for good. All right, our Wicked Witch, Elphaba Throp, is played by Cynthia Erivo, and she is fantastic. I mean, all the acting in this movie is all around phenomenal. I'm just going down the list, so let's start from the top. Elphaba, yeah, she's an awesome... There's a reason I love this character so much and I have for so long, and it's because she is the underdog. Here's what I mean by that. Yes, she has magic magical power, more magical power than anyone else, but she's been bullied all her life for being different. By different, I mean green-skinned. That'll translate to a quality about you that you might feel ashamed of, whatever it may be. She didn't ask to be born like this, she's made fun of for it, underdog. And so when she's paired up with Galinda Upland, played here by Ariana Grande, they're not exactly gonna get along at first. Ariana Grande as Galinda Upland, if you haven't heard by now, she absolutely chews scenery. She steals every scene she's in, really. Okay, maybe not every scene, but a good chunk of them. I mean, when she's singing popular, I'll get to the music and songs later on, but oh my god, Point is, she is hilarious. See, Galinda comes from a rich, uppity background and upbringing. So she's spoiled, she's full of herself, she has her yes friends always following her around like puppies, one of which is played by Bowen Yang, who's hilarious by the way. But yeah, I died laughing at her bits and her scenes. She is every bit as born to play this role as you imagine. Then there's Jonathan Bailey as Fiero Tigalar from Winky Country. The stud, the prince, who comes to the school and charms everybody just by looking at them. Which, I'll be honest, I'm straight, but I almost fell in love with him myself. This guy's smooth he is charming and he's a great singer and dancer as well. A couple of his lines felt a little rushed in my opinion, but that is just a nitpick. He played the role really well. Other characters like Nessa Rose, who is Elphaba's younger sister, and Bach, who is a munchkin who also goes to the school, they're not in this movie as much as you might think they are, but that is fair because they're not really that relevant in Act 1 of the show either, but this is their setup. They are still important characters. Michelle Yeoh as Madame Horrible, the Dean of Sorcery at Shiz University, she was awesome. No surprise there. And lastly, gotta touch on Jeff Goldblum as the Wizard of of Oz, because this is going to be one of my things. Like, he is Jeff Goldblum playing the Wizard of Oz. He brings his Jeff Goldblum ness into that role. Not too much. He's not like Ian Malcolm. So he did actually grow on me in this role. I'll admit it. I thought he was good. He still wouldn't have been my first casting choice. I still admit that I think Kelsey Grammer would have been the ideal choice for me, but I'm not complaining about Goldblum's performance at all. In fact, he has a couple of pretty fun moments himself. Now, let me just bring you all on my level here. The reason that Wicked was always my favorite Broadway show of all time is because of just how cinematic it is. I remember seeing this as a kid and thinking this was meant to be a movie. It's the same reason that Pink Floyd's The Wall is my favorite album of all time. Because you listen to it and you're like, this is supposed to be a movie. That's why it was made into a movie. Same thing for me with Wicked. And I mean that in no disrespectful way to anyone who ever worked on the stage show at all. I have a lot of respect for it, obviously. But this was always why I prefer movies to stage shows. Because there are things that you can't do in a stage show that you can do in the movies. For example, in a movie you can build these huge, elaborate Sets, for which I gotta give this movie all sorts of props. Production designer Nathan Crowley. Let me just say this, man. You got the Oscar for best production design in the bag. To misdirectly quote director John M. Chu, if you wanna feel like you are in this world of Oz, 
You gotta build it. So they built Munchkin Land. They built Shiz University. They built the Emerald City. You're given plenty of time to look around at these huge, awesome sets, and they're all practical. They're all there, for the most part. There's a lot of CG, too, I won't lie. This movie is a great blend of the two kinds of visual effects. This is probably one of the most, if not the most, immersive movie adaptation of a musical I've ever seen. Because you are in the world of Oz for two hours and 40 minutes. And yeah, you didn't just mishear me. That's how long this movie is. And this is just act one of the show. The show itself is about two and a half hours long with intermission. So for act one to be stretched out into two hours and 40 minutes for part one, yeah, there is some stuff that is added to the story, which, all right, I know there'll be people who watch this video who have not seen the show, or at least they don't know it as well as I do. So I do apologize for making comparisons to the show. I will try not to do that. However, I will fail. So I'm sorry. See, this movie, it does take its time to tell the complete story of Wicked, which the Wicked show doesn't really actually do. I will say, yes, the Wicked show is still my favorite Broadway show of all time, but the story itself, it is rushed in the stage show. It is. This movie fills in those gaps. I'm not going to say how or when, of course, those are spoilers, but it does. This is the extended edition of Wicked. It was given the Lord of the Rings treatment, which is exactly what I wanted this adaptation to do. Spare no expense, leave nothing from the show out, and embellish the story. That's what it does. And yeah, I will say, for the most part, nothing is left out from the show. I say for the most part because a couple of minor things are taken away, but rest assured, if something is taken away, they put something back to make up for it. All right, you want to talk about some music, let's talk about some music. The music of Wicked is what drew me to it in the first place as a kid. It's what made me fall in love with it, and in its cinematic adaptation, I mean, what can I say? Every song from the show is left in, at least from Act 1, and they're drawn out, they're extended, they're embellished. In a couple of cases, they're even improved. I mean, you have the voice talents of Ariana Grande and Cynthia Erivo, and everyone else. Everyone else has a great voice too. Jonathan Bailey, Marissa Bodie, Ethan Slater, even Michelle Yeoh and Jeff Goldblum. But man, I'll just, let me just break this down for you. When you see Cynthia Erivo as Elphaba just up there on the screen singing Defying Gravity. If you're a fan like me, you won't be able to stop your tears from falling. I'll be honest with you, I've actually seen this movie twice now already. The first time I saw it, I sobbed about three or four times throughout the film. And one of them was during Defying Gravity. Because Defying Gravity is one of the most well-known Broadway anthems of all time at this point, And it is absolutely done justice in this movie, for sure. Oh my god, there's no arguing that. No one's gonna argue that. But also, still touching on the music, John Powell composed the score for this adaptation, and it is also phenomenal. I mean, the orchestrations, the ins and outs of the different arrangements of the songs throughout the film. Whether you're familiar with the music or not, you will recognize certain things, even some little Easter eggs to The Wizard of Oz. They're in there. They're in the notes. My biggest props to Mr. John Powell. So in the end, Wicked Part 1 managed to surpass even my super high expectations. I thought everything about it was awesome. Cynthia Erivo, Ariana Grande, and all the rest of the cast. The writing, the set design, the pacing, and of course the iconic music. If you're not a diehard Wicked fan like myself, then you will still enjoy the movie, probably a lot. Cause you can see right in front of your face when you're watching it that it was made with love. And that's all thanks to director John M. Chu. I saw a post that someone made that said he should just direct every movie musical from now on. And I must agree, cause he knows how to do it and do it really well. After all, he did In the Heights before this and I love that movie too. So yeah, Mr. Chu, I hope you're happy, because if I had my way, you'd be doing nothing but movie musicals from now on. In other words, for Wicked Part 1, I will say, go see this movie right now. I already have plans to see this movie again, like at least three more times. What can I say? A few different people want to see it with me, and I couldn't be happier to see it again. So, Wicked Part 1, have you seen it yet? I, I don't know, have you? It's not really out publicly yet for at least a couple more days, but hey, I'll ask you anyway. Have you seen Wicked Part 1 yet? What are your thoughts on it? Or have you seen the show? What are your thoughts on that? No spoilers, please. Whatever you think, go ahead and leave a comment. And of course, thank you for subscribing. Peace!